We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. This will help us grow. Also note, buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also. Thank you for supporting our show. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. I'm Rob or Ranger Rob as they call me. And I wanna welcome you to the show. This is episode 35 and today is the show that and I know, first of all, I know with all this uh, stay-at-home stuff and all that is a problem for everybody. Everyone's got their issues, uh, whether it's unemployment, kids are home, um, shortage of money. There's all kinds of concerns out there. But I want to share my story of how um, this virus is uh, affecting us, and that's kind of explains why I haven't got as many episodes out this week. And mine has to do with caregiving. <clears throat> so for some of you that know us, you know that within the last year and a uh, half a year, we had to go up to Central Oregon and uh, my wife lost her father. And <clears throat> excuse me, they uh, lived in a uh, five acre place kind of out in the boonies in a place in Bend, Oregon. And um, so uh, uh, the other thing was we use, we keep our RV fifth wheel on their property because at least twice a year we go up to Central Oregon and that was kind of our vacations, which really wasn't much of a vacation to kind of check on them and, and see how they're doing. And they're all in their, uh, both of them are in their eighties. Anyway, in September, we lost Sherry's father and her mother was actually the one we thought would go first <laughs> anyway because she really had some health issues and so when we got up there <clears throat> um and i'll try to keep the story a little bit short um we first thought well maybe we um try something you know try something or another to see if we could take care of her and it turned out to be way too much and we have our careers and my w wife had work and stuff and um at the time she got laid off um on a uh, uh because her, their company was being moved to another state <clears throat> so she got a six six <laughs> six month severance pay which was great because at the time it worked out really good because um we had income and we could still take care of her mother and so we have this five acre estate up there, tons of stuff. So the first month and a half, we're kind of just kind of getting our hands around everything. Like, you know, all the, um, my wife is, is out of four kids. She's the executor of everything. So, uh, we went from not knowing what was going on to instant day, um, caregivers. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, that shocked us in the first place then trying to decide what's the best move here. We can't stay out in his toolies. My wife needs, you know, we have a house in, in Phoenix and my wife, the kind of work she does is corporate accounting kind of stuff. Um, the big cities is where the bigger money is. And, um, you know, we still have quite a few years before we can fully retire. I'm retired semi. Um, and that's our health care and the whole works. So anyway, luckily we had health care during this time too. So the final decision was we would set her up, uh, bring her down to our house and see if we can handle caregiving a little bit. And uh, uh, so that was quite the, quite the, uh, <laughs> I don't know, adventure getting her down here, which can't sit real long and uh, uh, quite frail in the whole works. But anyway, we got her down here. We drove the whole time and uh, Boy, I was within a week, we we're realizing this is too much for me and Sherry to handle. And so they had the right attitudes. I mean, they, she knew that she probably needed to go into assisted living, but we would prefer that she's an assisted living close to some family. And we were the only family close to her. And so we decided to 
set her up in assisted living down here in Arizona. So that was quite the fiasco of learning all about the different um, assisted living and uh, uh, making sure she, you know, and luckily she, uh, they were set up well so she could be in a decent place. So after uh, going through and interviewing several places, we found a really nice place, which was only two blocks away from our house. So <clears throat> that's how we got to this point. Well, um, uh, so we kind of got her settled in, got some furniture. She was actually improving and doing much better things and stuff as far as getting around. And uh, she uh, needs medications and stuff like that. So she has support on that. Um, but long story short, I mean, we're getting to this point where suddenly we got this CV virus thing coming in, right? So just as that's going on, they do, um, this is before anything happened, a lockdown on, on because, you know, up in Washington State, they had such a problem with the assisted living. Um, all the assisted livings around here and, um, and all the other forms of elderly care were on lockdown. Nobody goes in, no one goes out as far as family. Can't go in at all. Well, we're looking at an 82 year old lady who hates technology, has no cell phone, um, uh, just uh, just hates technology. She wouldn't touch a computer with a 10 foot pole. So that's always made it a little harder because she's never been, it's not like we could Skype her or talk to her using any of the virtual tools out there. Anyway, so we get into this lockdown and uh, uh, we had problems with her phone, which happens to be internet related. And for me to get her internet to work on that phone, uh, of course, the day that they have the first day of lockdown, it goes, they changed the password there without telling us. And so her phone goes down. So now you get this 82 year old lady in a uh, assisted living who has no means of being able to dial out or, or get a call. She really doesn't even handle phones very well. I mean, we're talking low tech. And so uh, we did get permission to go in there. We masked up the whole works and we actually got her running again. Uh, but we had, it was kind of a 24 hour um, time period between when they made the announcement and when they would totally lock people down. Anyway, so got that. Well, s within a day or two, she starts um, not feeling well. And so she, uh, you know, they have medical staff there and stuff. Anyway, um, long story short, I won't tell you about all her ailments and stuff, but ended up going to the hospital. So here's where another problem comes. So with the CV virus, you can't go into assisted living, no family, nothing, nobody. And you can't go into hospitals either. So imagine now we got an 82 year old lady who's has no access to her family, can't dial out, doesn't have a cell phone, couldn't run one there even if we gave one to her. And uh, then uh, now since Sherry is her uh, uh, caretaker, uh, we can't be there to help with decision making and, and things like that. So we can't even hardly talk to her and we can't go in a hospital. You can't even go to the waiting room. You can't even visit them. So um, communications were terrible, still are. And so uh, just let's add to this. Um, we thought it would be kind of an in and out thing. She had some uh, pains and things and uh, we kind of know some of her ailments and stuff. And with Sherry there, she could coach her through and kind of get the right test and the right people looking at her and making sure the medications are balanced and all that stuff. But virtually impossible and I mean, tried to do by phone what we could. Um, <clears throat> just with now working out still, she's, and, and why I'm making this, she's still there. So she's having more difficulties, but it's more than just that. She's also, I think the CV virus was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Being up alone, she doesn't like to leave her room. There's lots of things to do in that place, but uh, also in the assisted living, they shut down the uh, eating areas. They locked everybody into their rooms and um, just to be, you know, they're being protective. And uh, so 
a lot of their amenities are gone. So, uh, and she likes to watch CNN all day. <laughs> so you imagine the, hearing that crap 24 seven about the CV virus. And then you know, obviously she's lost her husband and, uh, now she's in the hospital and they want to do certain kinds of trying to figure out what's wrong with her, but Sherry's not really there to assist. And then of course we're all stressed out and, and then to add to it, she's got two cats. And so we can't even go in to feed the cats. And so finally we go, um, so after a couple of days that she's in there being tested, um, and she's losing her enthusiasm too. Um, so uh, I'm sure, I mean, I can, it's understandable. She's kind of like admitted she's ready to let go. And it's sad. Um, but so now we get this other problem these two cats. So we finally worked out arrangements where the people go up and feed them once, but they said, you got to get the cats out of here. Well, we can't take the cats, obviously, because we have our own pets. And our daughter can't, she's down here too, can't take the cats either. <clears throat> and uh, you remember every time that we have to run or go around stuff, it's a, another chance of me and Sherry could get exposed to something too. And we were trying to be locked down. So we're kind of getting forced to be out in the public. And that's not a good situation either. So there's a lot of the stress of all this. And so we finally got arrangements where they would send one of their people up with two carriers and go find these two cats. And uh, we finally got the cats and they brought them down. Once again, we're not allowed to go in. Um, and we put the cats into shelters um, or a kind of resort kind of place. And uh, yeah, and that's no cheap thing either. It's like $45 a day um, to put these cats. And so, but we did just get, we just accomplished that today. But this has been going on for about five days now. Once again, now uh, uh, when they, we try to call her at her room, she doesn't hear very well and she doesn't answer the phone. So Sherry's not getting to talk to her mother, uh, her sister, uh, other siblings can't seem to get through either. And uh, oh, just total stress, stress, stress. And the main thing is we just can't go in the hospital and assist and be by her side and and she doesn't, you know, she's got short term uh, memory issues and things like that. And it just compounds this whole problem. Um, anyway, so tomorrow she goes in for a um, exploratory thing on her liver because she's complaining of aches and stuff like that. But on the phone, she sounds terrible Two, She's already said that she's like ready to let go. And so that's, you know, obviously riding on Sherry's shoulders and, uh, you know, of course, we're trying to function here. <laughs> At the same time, we get a new puppy and uh, Sherry's answering phones like crazy, trying to call doctors, trying to call assisted living, trying to get reports, trying to find out what's going on. And uh, her mother's just not very helpful in giving us the information we need to say, you know, what's the right things to do for her and those kind of things. So anyway, um, this new world has created a whole new issue for uh, I'm sure there's other folks out there that have kids in the hospital or things like that. I'm sure they're going through or people that need assistance or VA hospitals and things like that. Oh my gosh, has this created a problem? And uh, you can't f be upset. I mean, they're all trying to be safe. I appreciate the fact that I don't want, I don't want to even go to the doctors for the sniffles or anything to keep from being exposed and yet Sherry and I get forced into having to take cats places or having to do these things and we're trying to shelter in place. So you can see our dilemma too. We can't afford to get sick and we can't, um, we got to take care of her mom. So now we got this dilemma. We don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, we hope everybody would put an extra prayer in for Sherry's mother. Um, whether she wants to let go or whether she gets better, we like, you know, obviously like to see her get better, but, um, uh, either way, I mean, uh, we got the right mindset and, and things under control. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I thought it shared kind of like how sophisticated this gets when there's lockdowns going on 
And if you have someone in a hospital or someone in assisted living and some other services like that, imagine what some of these families are going through. Uh, our situation is not fun, not trying to look for anybody to feel sorry for us. I'm just trying to show you that we all are sharing in sacrifices here and hard decisions along with, I know there's people in our families that are worried about their jobs or just got furloughed or um, all this kind of stuff. I am thankful that our government is doing what they're doing. I've mentioned this in other shows back in 2008 when things were really bad and Sherry and I took a big hit. There is no help, no help at all. You're on your own. No matter how much the banks and the real estate office bubble broke and all that stuff, you're, you're screwed. If you were in financial ruin, you lived through it or did a bankruptcy. Um, there is no help. So I don't care what you think about this president or whatever, but this administration, this president, uh, this group has is really stepping up to see that the little guys, hi little guys, us, um, is uh, getting some kind of relief. And then unemployment's being boosted up. If, if you know anything about Arizona, our unemployment is exceptionally low. And so it's not very survivable money. It's like two or 300 a, a week as opposed to what Washington State's like five or 600. Anyway, um, it's not a good place to get unemployed. <laughs> so uh, um, anyway, I thought I'd share that story to either make people realize just how hard things are out there, understand other problems, uh, people's problems out there, standing in other people's shoes and realize that we all have some issues going on here. Uh, obviously there's tons of other things uh, because of all the stuff going on here, we're having a hard time keeping up with the radio station and our, our videos and, and uh, trying to put out some new input and stuff because that's part of our business too. And so, uh, like I said, the point was to share that we all have something going on here. Some are worse than others. Some folks are just fine. But uh, uh, the inconvenience of trying to work from home. Uh, imagine trying to be a salesperson. One of our family members is. That's 100% commission. They just furloughed everybody. And uh, anyway, it's quite a good sized company. And so you can see it's really tough on each family a little differently. And so uh, be understanding, listen to one another, let other people rant, give us everybody a chance. I have my radio show, so I get ticked off. I can do a radio show about it and I feel better, it's therapy. Um, we have to open our hearts, open our understanding, be supportive of all our government and people helping us. Um, I am grateful, so grateful to see the help. I'm sure our economy is going to be a mess, but um, the fact that we're getting some help, we didn't have that before. And some of you are probably younger and I may not have had to go through 2008 and, or your parents did. There was nobody helping them. We all survived that without any help at all. This time we're getting a little bit of help. And so I am grateful for it. Um, we're, you know, we'd be all right. We'd survive things all right if we didn't get the help. But I know so many other families that, uh, hey, to suddenly just one day you're employed and all that and the next day shut down everything and, and life stops. Um, that's severe. So anyway, I thought I'd share that story with you and, uh, uh, hopefully makes you feel better. Maybe realize that you're not alone. We're all in this together and uh, I've got my fingers crossed and doing extra prayers for uh, uh, Sherry's mother and uh, and for Sherry. Uh, my job is the support and uh, uh, that's hard too, but Sherry is obviously Sherry's mom so and her parents. I, I've lost my parents already, so I've been through that. It's not fun, but she got a long life with them. Um, I lost mine really young, so I'm actually jealous. So anyways, um, that's our story and I'm sticking to it. So let's move on to a new subject. Thanks for listening. After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. 
If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. Well guys, we are back. I'm just sitting here in the bushes <laughs> talking to you. Anyway, uh, I wanted to, um, if you haven't noticed on the channel, we created a new playlist. And uh, it has to do obviously with our new puppy, our German Shepherd. And of course our beautiful chocolate lab cinder and so we're going to um, a couple of times a week uh, just create happy fun shows uh, pertaining to the new puppy and cinder uh, the puppy's 10 weeks old and cinder's seven and a half years old so it's really interesting we're worried about how well an old dog that's been no other dogs in our lives uh, would handle a puppy and also we have this little gray cat of ours and uh, amazingly enough so far the blend has been great uh, I think it's actually been Cinder gets as much loving as ever but she's actually getting more and more attention now because we're also b making sure everything's balanced and she's stimulated quite a bit with this puppy constantly harassing her and so it's been uh, so far a, a pretty neat adventure and we thought that what a great story to share with people an older dog getting used to a younger dog and then a german shepherd who's a highly intelligent um, amazing dog um, as we work our way through getting them familiar with each other and the work so the new uh, latest videos are just now starting to come out uh, we have an uh, introduction video and then one little three minute music video just them running around having fun and then we have another video coming out I'm editing tonight um, that will come out either tomorrow or the next day um, that uh, actually shows her first experience of swimming because we have a pool and we want to make sure that um, she knows how to swim or if she falls in the pool she doesn't freak out so uh, anyway she's doing great and she's not afraid of uh, terrified of water I mean obviously it's new to her um, she's constantly nipping away at the chocolate lab and and so far the chocolate lab's been quite tolerant a few times have been a little skirmishes of just saying uh you, you've gone too far um and the cat oh my god this dog is not afraid of the cat at all and it's uh hilarious to watch her chase the cat around and a cat when she's had enough turns around hisses and bats her once and um, but quite hilarious actually so so far it's been a good story it's been sad because we've got all this new excitement the house is really fun and enjoyable at the same time we're going through the crisis that we talked about in the early, uh, module I just talked about and so it's been a hard week because you gotta stay in your toes when you got a little puppy like this one because they're, they're way too freaking smart and so uh, she is a, a purebred German Shepherd and, and Cinder's a purebred chocolate lab um, and so we're going to take you on the journey of as we get them together uh, as the puppy learns new things Cinder's learning new things and uh, you know, the health issues that we are uh, there's no health issues but making sure they have their shots and the puppy will have to get her microchip and still be spaded we have no intentions for puppies and uh, you get to go through that journey with us and watch her grow up um, and uh, uh, you'll see that it's been very healthy for the older dog so I hope you enjoy the new play playlist on the, on our channel along with all the other things we do um, uh, I haven't got a I haven't got one of these shows out for a couple of days because of our crisis and I'm also behind on Ranger Rob has your back uh, interviews I'll get caught up along with the radio station of keeping all that up um, we've fallen behind in getting a few files loaded and stuff but it's running fine uh, just frustrating I feel like I'm spread a little thin because of our crisis and uh, to be expected so uh, anyway I was also going to show you our new hat it's a 
it's for the Ranger Rob channel itself, but this is with the white logo. And so I just got this in today. thought I'd um, show it off here a little bit. You can get these at Amazon. Just go to Amazon.com and type in Ranger Rob. And then if you go to the Ranger Rob shop or our brand, you'll see this hat's available and uh, you can order it right from Amazon. Anyway, they're great hats. I like the kind of short version hats. Um, we don't make the deep. I don't I don't see a lot of people really like the deep, deep kind of hat. This hangs kind of tall. Um, so we've been going with the ball cap kind of hat. And so uh, they're comfortable and uh, they're just very versatile and stuff like that. And they come in all kinds of colors. You don't have to get black. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can get pink if you want. <laughs> I don't care what you get. Anyway, there's all kinds of colors. And we also have hoodies and things like that. Uh, we have a really cool uh, fanny pack for those that have pets. The fanny pack's design also has Range of Rob poopy bags on it. But um, also, um, you put your treats in there. So when you're training your pet, you have your little treat bag on your side. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of what's going on new on the channel. So I thought I'd kind of get you briefed on that. Don't forget that Easy Street's plays on Good Talk Radio and uh, we also play in several other platforms. In the description below will be a link to all these different things we're talking about and uh, go check it out and if you haven't please take the time to like and subscribe to our channel and share it all over the world and uh, help us out. We appreciate it. Buying our products, the Ranger Rob poopy bags or our hats or anything helps the channel, helps the radio station, helps the puppies. And of course, with the CV virus going on, we could all use a little help. So if we have something that uh, you wouldn't mind purchasing from us, you're helping the channel and you're getting something back. Uh, if you haven't tried the Ranger Rob poopy bags yet, I highly recommend you buy a box. Oh my gosh, they're so worth it. Uh, I didn't just design another bag that's like all the other bags. Why would I do that? These are different and you'll find out when you start using them. Um, they're so comfy. They're so big. They're so... Um, easy to work with, easy to turn inside out, easy to tie off, and they smell like lemon. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so let's move on. Guys, we're getting to the end of our show. It's only a 30-minute show, which uh, I hope you appreciate it that we don't get long-winded here. Anyway, I want to remind you, but I am, uh, I've been looking at the confirmed uh, CV uh, stuff, and uh, well over a half million people have been affected by all this. And the United States is actually above the China list, but we don't believe that number anyway. But anyway, it's getting pretty serious out there. I know all of us are going through a lot of uh, stress out there. And uh, I'm out here in this blue molten lava. And uh, ooh. <laughs> anyway, you get a little seasick watching that. Anyway, uh, I wanted to thank you for listening to the show. I hope our story on the beginning of the show helps you understand that all of us are going through something on this and it's not fun at all. And uh, I hope all of you uh, make it through this fine. I put in a prayer for all of you guys that uh, um, that things work out good for you and your family. And uh, uh, be safe out there. Be smart. Take, take this serious. Do what they're telling us to do. They mean well. Are they perfect? No but they mean well. I'm not really into all the conspiracies out there. Um, I just uh, a little bit, I just don't think everybody sits around all day and say, how can we turn this into uh, uh, the mark of the beast today? Uh, I think it's just something we're all going through. The whole world's affected. We're not alone. And luckily our government's doing what they can based on you know the bureaucracy and the different opinions out there and stuff they're doing something to help us out and we do appreciate that so guys be safe follow the rules stay home stay away from harm and uh cook something <laughs> anyway till next time bye thank you very much for watching our video please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world thanks